Good morning and welcome to Match Day Breakfast. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. Fair to say it's a relatively big game for the Cherries today, mate. Just a bit, mate. Yeah. I mean, normally living for the weekend, but Friday night feels, feels a bit weird. But being Friday night at Fulham before, mate, and it went all right. So that's keeping me going because it's going to be a difficult one, isn't it? It's a huge clash today. We're first, entertain second. And well, let's take a look at the league table then. This is where we're at. We've been at the top of the table for most of the season so far. However, we didn't quite get back to first spot with that late goal from Coventry at the weekend. But Fulham, there they are. Their form, 1-3, drawn two. Ours, pretty patchy, mate. And it's fair to say with our injury crisis as well, this is not the time to be playing one of the best teams in the division, right? No, it's not. We could have done with them a few weeks ago and Mitrovic was out as well. But um, And yeah, we've got players out, like you say, and one win in five is our patches of the season. But, you know, sometimes you need a game like this, don't you? We struggled with the teams kind of probably more scrapping near the bottom. So, you know, maybe it will suit us. But, yeah, I mean, ideally, we don't really want to be going to Fulham when we've got, you know, nine or so players out, Lerma suspended, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But back to the wall stuff, we start the season like that and we've done all right. So, yeah. you know, going go into it with no fear, I don't think we're expecting anything. I think even the most ardent Bournemouth fan would, would take a draw tonight. Yeah, so it feels like we're in a bit of a rut at the moment. Six days ago, in a game that looked like the Cherries would get their first three points since the last home win versus Swansea, uh, the game turned on one bit of action where a poor back pass meant that Jefferson Lerma, he did take a heavy touch, but then took out the commentary striker, which meant he saw red. And it's fair to say that Fulham fans are quite pleased at a lack of the Colombian in midfield today. So much so... We'll be speaking later to Sammy James from the excellent Fulhamish pod on his thoughts of all things tonight. I'll, I'll tell you what, it's going to be such a huge match. And also his prediction and the players to watch. Not, not that we really need to ask him too much more about that. So, yeah, it's it's been fairly disappointing, I would say, over the last few matches. And it seems to coincide with the players that are out. Yeah, I think that's probably... It, it takes it off a little bit because you think, well, we are missing some really key players. Um, I think the uh, originally, because obviously Kale was just been out, but the loss of Lloyd Kelly, I don't think we realised how big that would be mm. um, and his partnership with with Kale. I don't necessarily think, you know, Meps, Meps gets a lot of stick. I don't think he's coming and being awful. I just think you, you miss Kelly's balance. You miss his, his, that extra bit of pace he's got to cover around and, and things like that. And him and Zamora, that little partnership on that left yeah. side of the fence, I think we've, we've really missed that. And, you know, Leif Davis and Meppham have come in occasionally. They, they've done okay, but the level seems to be not quite there. And it just looked a bit dis disjointed, hasn't it? Um, and yes, it's disappointing. While I think Derby, for example, we had that game in the bag. Coventry, we had it in the bag to the last kick. Don't, don't. So it's it's small margins, isn't it? Fine margins. And we would have won both them games, really. So it's not been disastrous. It's been a little bit of a blip. I think if we were honest about it, it was going to come at some point. The fact it's come when we've got a few bad injuries, it's, it kind of makes sense. Let's just hope we can go out there, go out there tonight, put in a decent show. They're going to be hard to beat. But if we can go there, maybe nick a point, and then get some players back and start kicking on again. And but this is when you this is when you see a good team, it's easy to to be to be good when you're winning games. But you know when you have a little bit of a rough patch, let's see who the characters are. Let's mm. see what they're about. So um, yeah, you know, still, you never know. They're all the pressure on Fulham tonight. Mm. I think that's what we got to take. They're all expecting a win tonight with the players we got out, and they're extra motivated with the Scott Parker factor. And I mentioned this briefly. Uh, we spoke earlier on today to Sammy James, as I said, um, from the excellent Fulhamish. Make sure you subscribe to them and listen to their pod. Absolutely super, uh, superb stuff. And Scott Parker, he left on pretty bad terms, really. And then the statement from the chairman, I think it was, as soon as he left, was very catty. I thought some of the remarks there were quite obtuse, really, but obviously very bitter at the way he left the club. And it seems that whenever we lose, there's a lot of Fulham fans coming on the AFCB hashtag to gloat somewhat. But whenever we win, they stay quiet. But they're extra motivated tonight to get one over their former manager. So much so, I think... It could be, you know, first v fourth tonight, and Scott Parker could be managing the side in fourth, and it and it wouldn't be as big, yeah. Because I honestly think that 
you know, when you're talking about ratios, like, you know, more of them uh, are sort of wanting to win, not because it's Bournemouth and they're in second, but because it's Scott Parker. Yeah, no, I agree. It does seem a weird one. We don't know the ins and outs of kind of what happened there. But, you know, from an outsider's point of view, you thought when well, he come in and he, he managed to do the, you know, what, what was asked of him and get him promoted. And then you thought they'd be near the bottom and they didn't quite do it. Um, but yeah, there, there seems to be a lot of talk about kind of negative football when they're, especially when they're up to the Premier League and stuff like that. Um, got to remember, it was his first first time managing in the Premier League and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, at the moment, we're pretty happy with what we're seeing, regardless of the blip. I think, to be honest with you, the more I hear him speak and stuff like that, I, I really warm to him. I mean, it's going to take us a while to get over, you know, losing Eddie like we did, you know, the king. But listen, he's he's we, we're happy with what we see. There's there's obviously certain things there that Fulham didn't like, which is fine. It's all individual, and sometimes it ain't a fit, and it didn't quite work. But like you say. There is that little little edge in there that they think, oh, they want to get one over him. And Scott Parker probably is thinking, I'd love to go there and show them what we're about. And you, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it'll be a real interesting one. But, yeah, I think this is one that they would have looked at at the start of the season, regardless of the, the league table. Mm. So, right, we're going to take a look at some of the comments of people that are here at the moment. we got Robert Thompson, Go Chezzers, big one. Uh, Dan Short is just uh, telling us that he's getting his Middlesbrough away tickets. Well done to you. We've got Daniel from Florida, who's here as well. Chris Hubble, Aaron Kay's here. Mike Irwin, understand you were on the Talking Cherries chat last night. Good morning uh, to you, sir. We've also got Rob Wells as well. Hope those travelling have a great day. Good evening from Brisbane. Paul, how you doing, mate? Hope you're doing all right. John's here. Also, AACB Germany. We got Mark Cole here as well. Bob Street's watching. Hi, Bob. Hope you're doing all right. We got Steve Hensman here. Looking forward to seeing your beautiful face later. Uh, worried for this one is one of the comments we've had in. We got Carol here. Wing. William Shakespeare's here watching from school. What are you doing? What are you doing? Chris Cook from Sydney. And we'll go through a few more comments. And if you want to take part on air as well, you can see the link just below Tom. It's afcbpodcast.com forward slash take part and we will bring you on screen so let's move forward morgan scott's on the way and he's going to talk to us about parker's presser good morning morgan how are you yeah very well thanks you guys doing all right this friday morning very good, mate. Even more better for seeing you, of course. Always. Oh, very nice of you, Tom. But um, no, nah, it's good. Uh, you're helping me get into the Christmas spirit with wearing your Christmas jumper. So thanks for that. Oh, it's about time someone mentioned it. I can't believe the, the chat isn't filled with, you know, this Christmas joy. You yeah. Know, what a jumper this is. Come on. Come on. Let's let's get more in. There's a wave. There you go, buddy. There's there's some waves for us. Yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah, mate. Didn't ask for you. Um, Morgan. Parker's presser. I'm looking at the AFCB.co.uk uh, website. I'm only seeing about four minutes worth. What's going on? Uh, yeah. Um, so should we start with some positive news and then go, go on, on to maybe a little bit more negative? So Fill um, me with positivity, Robbie Brady, So uh, Robbie Brady and Adam Smith are back in training. Oblige, it's only been a couple of days. So being realistic, they're probably not going to be there. He also goes on to say the treatment room at the Vitality Stadium has been a bit... Uh, busy at late with several other players sideline. Obviously, uh, Gary Cahill missed the draw with Coventry City, while Lloyd Kelly, Jordan Samora, Ben Pearson, and Junior Stanislav have all been um, missing in recent weeks. Mm. Uh, Parker does not expect to see too many return um, ahead of our trip to the cottage this evening. Um, he had where we have been with that. There is no. Um, we have been crypting over the last four or five weeks with some big injuries and a lot of players injured and he hopes to have more back with more depth ASAP um, but that's kind of what he had to say it's not obviously the best news obviously I'm sure Tom's going to be gutted obviously we know Lerma out as well um, after that red card and also he did get charged um, yeah. as well and I think he's got to reply is it the third today? It is isn't it? So yeah, he's got to reply to that yeah, he's got to reply to that charge by the end of today, I think. Um, and I think it could be another one or three match ban, depending on what he's what went on after um, that. So um, that could be another issue going into the end of the month as well. So that's kind of what he said at Parker's Trestle. 
Yeah, it's a weird one with with Morgan bringing up Lerma there. We were talking about this, weren't we, last mm. night? It does seem an odd one. Like Scott Parker said, he's not the best at English. Yeah, it didn't yeah. seem like, don't get me wrong, every player when they get sent off have a little bit of, oh, come on. But it didn't seem like he was there for a, a really long period of time having to go to the ref. Yeah, it didn't right, seem yeah. anything. I didn't notice anything. So that would be an interesting one. Um, it doesn't sound like Scott Parker or the club were really expecting that at all. So mm. that would be interesting. Hopefully that will be something we can, even if we just kind of say I was lost in translation, do you know what mm. I mean? And maybe get away with that one. Because um, he, he did. Yeah, the ref, uh, Parker did say, um, just to come in there, Tom, he, mm. he, um, maybe uh, the referee knew some Colombian, but he wasn't yeah. quite sure on that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was be a weird one. And like you say, we've got a few back train. It'll be interesting to see if, even if they allow someone like an Adam Smith, Robbie Brady, to maybe travel and then maybe today they kind of have a little quick quick fitness test, you know what they can do these days, mm. and see if they're available for at least to give us some some strength on the bench maybe if we need them. Um, you would have thought Robbie Brady is just more about fitness really yeah. rather than a bad injury. So could he maybe provide some sort of depth there? So potentially I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them two maybe is on the bench today. But yeah, we're, we're definitely a little bit, a bit heavy at the moment on the old fitness wise aren't we there's just so many injuries at the moment it's come at a bad time for us and i mean lerma's going to be a huge huge loss for us today and fulham fans are loving the fact that he's not going to be available and that puts the puts the focus on the midfield and we're sort of wondering will ben pearson be back because mm -hmm. he would sort of fill that hole so you know like somewhat yeah. not sure that either lewis cook or gavin kilkenny are the same player or could be the same player as what jeff is it's interesting because i think we all, I mean, we rate all four of them, but Gavin Kilkenny and Lewis Cook, I always feel like you need one of them, but not both. Mm. And it's the same for Ben Pearson and Lerma. I think when they played together, we thought you don't need them both, but you definitely need one. Mm. So the fact we're probably going to have to go over two that potentially, obviously, Billy and probably be in front of them, but a, a two that probably don't complement each other that well because they've got similarities. Mm. And we saw that against Coventry. I thought he did okay, but I thought, I thought Lewis was very good actually. But, um, I thought Gavin maybe was kind of, he got lost a little bit and, and he didn't, he didn't stand out. So, they're all good players, but I think it's always best to have you know, kind of one of Pearson and Lerma next to one of, of Lewis Cook and, and Kilkenny. But we'll get through it. We start the season with with Mark Ondes and Kilkenny in there, didn't we? And, yeah. and done all right. So, yeah, I mean, he's one that we're still not mentioning, but he could be a surprise into the side. It's probably not the game for him. But, yeah, listen, we've got... We've got a few problems at the moment. We had it felt like we had we didn't know who to play because we had so many options, and now it's gone the other way. It's mm. always the way in there, but we got a good squad. How is it that only a couple of players can be out, and it causes so much calamity? We're playing different lineups to actually cope mm. in certain situations against Coventry, three at the back. Yeah, I mean, wh why are we doing that when we had Ibsen Rossi playing at the back in in like in a back four mm. for the first part of the season? And then suddenly against Coventry City, who, yeah, I mean, we're not trying to be disrespectful to them, but we think, given our home form and given their away form, we should have got three points. And like all of a sudden then, what you're doing, you're playing Jaden Anthony as wing-back, mm. not in his natural position, not so good uh, you know, defensively. He should be further up the pitch. Why not stick to a four, like he might revert to tonight, yeah. and play either Leif Davis or Chris Mepham left-back, and then play Jaden Anthony further advanced where we should be. I think it's a I think there's a lot of a lot of different reasons obviously injuries come into it. But I think change the system, I think Coventry did play a back three. Mm. And and I I wonder if if Scott Parker thought player for player we're better than Coventry. You know, like I say they started really well. So if we match them up, we we could do all right here. We should be fine. Mm. And we and we were until the sending off probably to be fair. Um so yeah I, I wonder if we just went to match them up. And is there a little bit of do I trust Mepham and Cook? Maybe he doesn't trust them um, as a pairing and wanted to put a little bit of solidity in there with, with Jeff in there, who I thought was really good up until the send it off again. And I also think there's part of it that Leif Davis has been okay going forward, but there's definitely a defensive fragility there with yeah. with, with Leif Davis. And um, yeah, I wonder if he was just, he was trying something a little bit and thought, this is a good time to start the back three because we're matching commentary up a little bit. So yeah, but we'll, we'll find out a bit more tonight, won't we, on what he does. I mean, there's... It's going to be really interesting to see what he does with the with the lineup and also the the formation and system. Mm, very interesting, Morgan. Uh, before you go, closing comments, maybe a prediction from you. Um, uh, I'm speechless. No, I'm. Um, uh, we have to. <laughs> no, nah, that's the first time for everything. Um, I think yeah. we have to go there um, and show some fight and determination. Um, I think you can win a football match if you do the basics right. Um, 
And I think we were alluding to it the other day, Sam, um, off air, that we were just saying that it's amazing how a few injuries, like you, mm. Tom himself was saying there as well, um, maybe in January we do need the likes of Tom Lawrence and maybe a backup for Dom Solanke because it's amazing how we have all this depth in our squad and then suddenly we're scraping to make a bench full of mm. what we call first-team players. So I think um, tonight we're going to go there. I would take a draw, but I'm going to be positive because you're making the trip up. I'm sadly going to have to watch it on Sky. But um, we're going to go 2-0 to the Cherry because last time we won 3-0 on a Friday night. So right. hopefully we'll win 2-0. Love it. Morgan, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Legend. No worries. Safe travels and all that. And I'm sure we will see each other soon. Tom, enjoy your jumper up there. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Love it. Top man, Morgan. We've got Chris Cook here. Um, we'll get your mug to you. Can you send an email to sam at afcbpodcast.com? Because I'm not sure we have your address. And then I'll send it to you. Okay, mate? So, yeah, send it to sam at afcbpodcast.com. We've got Kirk here. Charlie's here. You're right, Charlie. Take a draw and run, she's saying. Uh, Stefan's here. Good luck tonight. A pity about the injuries. Pete North is loving the jumper. Tom. And, and I know that you talked about the hole in the wall. We may be able to slide in a quick half there, Pete. Um, because we're going to... Um, I'm not sure how we're getting to... Uh, Putney Bridge, but there are a few options. Let's put it that way. Um, Steve Hensman, just pop it around him. <laughs> Do you want anything? Get us a scarf, Hensman, yeah. while you're there, mate. Get him a scarf. Oh, look, here, here, here come the here jumper. They come. Here, they come. here they come. It Matt must have time. been some kind of delay. Right then, um, I think it's also time to uh, to talk about the opposition, hey? And to do that, and to talk about AC Bournemouth, we're bringing in the one and only Aaron Kay. Good morning, Aaron. How are you doing? Fella? Morning, morning, guys. How are you both? Good, mate. Uh, nervous? Am I nervous? I don't. I don't really know. I think the pressure's on them, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm. I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't go. I can't go on a Friday night, so I was gutted when it was moved. So I'll be watching from behind the sofa and um, on, on, on Kirk's uh, watch along on Cherry's Red Army um, if I can. Um, but yeah, I'm. Yeah. Look, as, as you've all spoken about already, the key thing is the injuries. If we were going there with our full team, I'd feel confident we could turn them over because I think we're a better team than them. Um, but with, you know, seven, eight, nine potentially first teamers out, maybe not all starters, I, I'm really, I, I don't think, I, I think we're going to lose the game. And that's the first time I've said that all season. And I don't think that's necessarily going to derail us or anything. As Tom said, you know, players are going to come back. None of them are long term, apparently. Um, you know, they've all been very close for, for some time, so they can't be that far away. Um, but I just, yeah, look, I mean, nothing would nothing would please me more clearly than going there and, and turning them over or, or obviously getting a draw, bite your hand off for it. But I just think with all the circumstances surrounding it, um, especially with Lerma being out as well, her, you know, it, it does depend on the players coming back. You know, um, the press conferences have been short when there have been press conferences. Um, the training, uh, you know, I was sifting through the training pitch with a fine tooth comb and I did see Ben Pearson in one of them, the back of Ben Pearson. But was that so, not Mark Condes? Because well, I was arguing with Mark. My, it's interesting because my boy Zach and J.K. were both saying, "Well, J.K. was like, that's Mark Condes." I said, "No, it's not. He's it, too round for Mark Condes." You know, um, it did look like Pearson's stance. You might well be right. I'm hanging on to the fact it's Pearson because I think we we desperately need him tonight. I obviously didn't see Kelly or Cahill there, um, and obviously not Zamora. Um, but I just wonder if you know, there's half of me is wondering if he's being a bit coy. Eddie always played his cards close to his chest, but Scott seems to say it more as it is. <laughs> and if, I, if he says they're not back, they're unlikely to be back. So I'm assuming they're not going to be back. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Oh, it's the Potentially, though, Sam, you thought, you thought it was Mark Condes as well, because I really couldn't tell. There was one picture from behind, wasn't it? I'm going to I'm gonna try to get find it up and see what, the, see what the people think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do and just see. Because you know what? I must admit, when I saw it, I did think, oh my goodness, Ben Pearson back. And like I said sure, to man. Tom, he would fill that hole more than playing, you know, Gav or or Lewis in that position yeah. would. The one, yeah, the, one, one thing we've got to remember as well is that you know the front three, assuming there's no injuries, are the front are after first choice front three, and we've obviously got Billing there and Lewis Cooks back. So you know the, the front five um, are kind of you know our first choice front five. So going forward, we should be absolutely fine. Obviously, we yeah. know that the, the full backs we're missing them. Obviously, going forward, but yeah, it's just defensively that I worry clearly. Yeah. This is the first you're going to put the picture up. This is the first time I've seen it. I've, I don't know the picture you're talking about. So I can go in 
blind if you like and i'm going to see this see this photo Ooh, and um see what i see what i think so um, who is this and let us know on chat who who is this i'm sadly gonna say i think that's mark on you can um, see the beard can't you see the beard i'm just under the, <laughs> on the right hand side maybe he i remember the last game and he mm. his hair's grown a lot mark on there's on it yeah, <laughs> but since the last yeah. time he played it's grown a lot <laughs> i don't think he's had haircuts since he last played and, I'm, um, I'm not doing ben pearson a disservice here but isn't that slightly not chubby is the wrong word, but a bit, bit built for Marcondas. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I, I don't know. I think, like, I mean, it could be, it could be him, but. This feels like the question of sport mystery person round, doesn't it? If we just want a close up of his like <laughs> yeah. legs or something, then it pans up and pulls uh, away we, at the last minute. Well, let's assume, let's assume it's Marcondas then, and none of them are back, I guess. I've heard uh, there's been a few little murmurings that Lloyd Kelly's been seen a little bit kind of on the training pitch and things like that, hasn't there as well? Um, I don't think they've put anything out there, but like you say, that might be a bit of a. Smoke screen from um from Scott mm. Parker said, you know, not mentioning him, but he's one that I remember when he was out, it, it didn't feel long term and you feel like, oh, could he be coming back? But yeah, I think I think that's key. As much as you talk about the midfield, I for me personally, I mean you could argue probably the right back spot, but I feel like our best back four's out. Mm. S- Smith, Smith, Kale, Kelly, and Zamura. And mm. I mean to lose your, your best back four, arguably right back potentially, then um and going to Fulham away and Mitrovic, things like that, it's it's going to be a tall order, but there's, you know, we mentioned it before. It's, it's partly, I, I quite like the fact that I'm not going into this game nervous because I think all the pressure's on them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they, if they can't beat us at home with this many players out, then, you know, they'll, they'll start asking questions, you know? So no, it's, yeah, not, it's not all on this game either, is it? Like, no. If we lose this game, it's not the end of the world. For me, the key thing is, you know, getting these players back fit. And, and we assume none of them are long term, but the problem is he keeps saying that. I mean, Ben Pearson has been very close mm. since before the international break. So where the hell is he? You know, so assuming they are close, then I'm, I'm not particularly concerned. Mm. So we got to talk about the opposition then, Aaron. And is it a stupid question of me to ask which Fulham player you're most worried about? <laughs> Probably not. Um, there's a few of them, though. But no, clearly Mitrovic, who's been probably below par the last couple. Well, he was ill for the two games ago he was below par against Preston f- f- from what I could see um yeah he, you know you've got first we've got to stop the supply to him so I think that's key obviously you know the likes of Harry Wilson and obviously we know how good he can be at this level Wilson um yeah. one thing he won't give you is searing pace over the top or you know he's not going to you know skin a player but his delivery is, is outstanding so we, we know the strengths and weaknesses um Cavano is also obviously a very good player and Seri runs the midfield for them so they got players all over the pitch. I think they're there to be got at. So I do think we'll score. I think it's just. I think both teams will score. Um, but you've got to stop the supply to, to Dimitrovic. You know he's clearly in a good run of form. Parker knows most of these players inside out, so you'd like to think he'd have a good idea of how to stop them. And also, Tom, with Harry Wilson, and we know how good he can be from a set piece. Doesn't it also underline the fact that we need to stop committing stupid fouls in, yeah. in our, in our last third, eh? Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. We, we know firsthand how good he is set pieces, uh, especially for he kicks in around the box. And when he was on load at card, if he scored against us, didn't he? Um, straight away. So it's, it does feel like he's probably got that bit between his teeth a little bit when he plays us. Cause it didn't probably quite work out here for us, but like I said, we were in the Premier League at the time and at this level, he's, he's a really good player and he'll be one of the players trying to, trying to supply Mitrovic, won't he? And I think if, whether it be Leif Davis, whether it be Anthony at wing back, we're going to have to, either of them are going to have to, you know, do a bit better really, because he's he's going to come inside and try and whip them balls in all day long. And he's going to be looking for Mitrovic every day. So that's, that's, that's going to be a, an area we're going to have to look at. But, but Scott Parker will know that and uh, he'll know. We stop the supply first and foremost. And then Preston, like Aaron alluded to, they 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 done it pretty well. So if you stop it, then... You know, it's all right, Mitrovic being good, but he's not going to do a lot. He's just going to stand there and wait for the supply. So if you stop it, you know, at his cause, then, you know, we might be all right. But, um, yeah, we've got to win them aerial duels against Mitrovic as well, of course. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Go on then, Aaron. Um, try to try to somehow predict this this one tonight, if you can. Uh, if, if, if none of those players are back, um, as Tom said, the whole first choice defence is out and obviously our best defence midfield is out. Um, there, and, and our second best defence midfield is potentially out. Um, yeah, it's looking good, isn't it? Um, I, I think I think we'll score because I think you know our, our, we're, we're always likely to score in games. We always look a threat. Um, I really don't want to predict a defeat because it's just I just I haven't done that for a long time. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hang on to a, a two-two draw and hope that that we we somehow come away with a point. Um, look, 
as as I've said before, you know, it's not like we're going to Liverpool or Man City or Chelsea or anything. You know, we're not yeah, it's, yeah. we're not in the Premier League. We're, we're, it's still Fulham at the end of the day. That they that they got they're a very good Championship team, but so are we. Um, you know, and if the likes of Steve Cook, now he's had a game behind him. You know, he's he, I'd like to think he'll be on Mitrovic rather than Mepham. Uh, and Meps is, you know, as Tom said, hasn't done anything necessarily wrong. Um, and we know that Stacey and, and Leif Davis, assuming they play, are, are perfectly capable. Um, so, th- there's, you know, maybe we're all being a bit too too negative because of previous results. But one, one thing Fulham will allow us to do is play. They're not going to, they, they clearly won't be sitting back. So there will be spaces in between and, and it's up to us to, to exploit it. So I'm going to go for a very optimistic 2-2 draw. But if we do lose... Uh, you know, I'm not going to go. Th- I felt sick after that commentary game um, mm. because of the way it all worked out. I don't think I feel sick tonight because it, you know it, it is what it is. My only worry is that QPR are the team who are in form and they're, they're coming up behind us. And realistically, the gap could be four points um, after after this weekend. So it's, it's getting a bit narrower. But and then we've got a difficult game next week. But yeah, two two draw. We'll come away with a point. Lovely. Aaron, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. Safe trip, boys. Bring it home. <laughs> Bring it home. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And look, um, we've, got, we've got to talk about this uh, managerial uh, list that we did uh, before Scott Parker was appointed. And we were looking at all the managers that, uh, in fact, was this before? No, I can't even remember when we did this. Was this after Woodgate? Or no, this was while he was in uh, kind of temporary charge on yeah, Woodgate. Uh, okay. And we weren't sure if he was going to get it to the end of the season or not. And Marco Silva you know, would have been one of the options, I think. And we didn't rate him. And at the top, we had like Slavisa Jakanovic and Nigel Pearson. And how wrong were we? Because he's 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 doing a great job with Fulham. And, you know, judging by the um, the sound of what Fulham fans are saying, that he's he's playing the football that they want to see. Whereas under Scott Parker, there were glimpses of it. However, and as we've seen this season, there's always the tendency to, even at 2-0 up, sit back. Rather than go the Eddie Howe gung-ho, let's score three, let's score four, let's score five. Um, handbrake on mentality. Yeah, he's probably a bit more pragmatic in the Scott Parker, which I think we've probably, we never really had that much of that as Bournemouth. Obviously, we had Eddie Howe for so long, who was very much the other way. So I'm almost quite enjoying seeing us being a little bit more, you know, we're, we're hard to beat, which I quite like. And then, you know, look, and I think tonight, uh, you know, Aaron kind of mentioned it there. I think they'll, they'll kind of let us play. And I think it could suit us in the sense of, you know, we struggled, like I keep mentioning, against kind of the teams that maybe do sit back and make it really difficult and horrible. I think if Fulham play, I, I kind of, even though they've got, they've got a lot of quality, I, I kind of trust us to be quite organised mm. and, and then counter and, um, you know, we've got a bit of pace on the counter-attack and we have still got our front options available. It's more, you know, the other end where we're struggling for numbers. So, yeah, I, Marco Silva, listen, I, I think it was more that, I think he's done he done really well at Olympiacos, I think it was, in Greece. Well, I could win the league with them. Um, <laughs> you know, there's there's not much competition over there. And then he went to Hull and when they were going down and they went down, went to Watford, didn't do much, went to Everton, didn't do much. So I think that's what it was really. And I think it remains to be seen. I think at the moment, I think they were probably... Fulham fans are quite happy with Scott Parker at this point in the championship. You know, he took them up. So it'll be interesting if they do go up, which I expect them to do, how he then does. And then you'll see what sort of manager he is because the squad, they, they've got to be up there, haven't they, with that mm. squad. But equally, I think Sheffield United should be up there. So, you know, he's still doing a, doing a decent job there. But um, yeah, it remains to be seen. But they're certainly liking what they see at the moment, aren't they, with him? So yeah, maybe we were wrong with that one. Maybe he is a, he is a good manager. But um, yeah, remains to be seen, I still think. I think it's a good time to uh, have a quick, quick chat to James Reed, who's with us. He's been standing by. He's got, he's got his AFC Bournemouth background. Yeah. With us. Well, James, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. Good to see you, mate. How are you feeling about the game tonight? Are Bournemouth going to win? Yeah, we are. How does it look? We've oh, got Marky fun. Masters who comes on and does these amazing graphics on screen. We don't know how to do it. James Reed here <laughs> has got this. This green screen background, mate. We, we don't know how to do this. I'm loving it. It's, it's already got me a bit more positive vibes. I, I fancy it already now. Just seeing James, I think, you know what? We're going to bring it home. James, um, you need to send me a link of how on earth you do these backgrounds because I don't know how to do it. Um, right. What's your scoreline prediction for tonight then, James? One, we two. need 2-1 two. Two, to Bournemouth. Superb. So that means by default, we're going to be top of the league at the end of it. James, yeah. if we win 2-1, happy Happy days. Do you know who's going to be scoring tonight? Yeah. Oh, he's putting it in on chat now. It's because like you always think that Chris Mappham's going to score, and also Dom Solanke as well. Brilliant stuff. And look, he's also told us how to do the background. James, thanks for coming on. Up the cherries, fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up the cherries. Also, Daniel from Florida's here, here he as is. well. 
Morning, mate. And it is morning, isn't it, where you are? My God. Hello. What time is it? 6.30. Mate, and <laughs> we've, Love it. we've made you wait for half an hour, mate. I'm so sorry. I could have gone back to bed. Um, how are you doing, mate? Are you, are you looking forward to the game? Um, it's I kind of am, but I'm also not. Because I'm telling you right now, if we lose, I can already see all the Fulham fans just... Oh, yeah, you look like how I feel, mate. Just it's, it's like looking forward to the game, but also there's just that. I think, I think we're probably a little bit overly worried, but we think, oh, god, they could get three and four, mm. they could really because they're, they're top side. But I don't know, do you, do you think we can? Can we nick something tonight, Daniel? What do you reckon? Do you reckon we can nick something tonight? This also gives me a lot of like when we played Watford, no one mm. ever thought we were gonna win, but we yeah. ended up winning it and drawing it. So I yeah. feel like we could do something, but it's just the players that we're missing that I'm worried about that mm. that the players might struggle against because most of these players don't play with the play players that we're playing. We'll probably be playing today. Yeah, true. Mm. It's a good point though, isn't it? With last season, we uh, Watford and Norwich obviously went up as a top two quite comfortably. Yeah. We didn't lose to either of them, did we? We actually yeah. had the double on Norwich. True, yeah. So you know, yeah, I agree with what Daniel's saying there. You you know, it's. And Aaron was saying it as well. You know, we're not going to Liverpool. We're not playing Man City. You know, Fulham are a good side, but but we're a good side as well. And I know we've got players out. And I think that's probably why we're kind of being a bit more fearful. But I don't know. I still think we could nick something. We, I've had some great nights in Fulham. Mm. I just feel like there's something there. Something there. Well, we have had some great nights, haven't we? Um, you know, the and great afternoons. The the 3-0 in the Premier League was absolutely superb. We took them apart. Everyone remembers the 5-1 with Steve Cook with that wonder goal. Could be in action tonight, might not be. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, and uh, by the way, there's been a few people on the chat that have told us about Sky Sports moving the fixture. This one's been moved, as has breaking news in the last half hour. Luton Town away has been moved to 12.30, which, you know, which really annoys us because like, we're trying to do an away day experience. Like, oh. We're going to have to stay up again. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to stay up in Luton. Oh, oh, maybe we will, mate. Maybe we will. Uh, so that's oh, still a Saturday. So it's moved. It's. I mean, I suppose it's a compliment, isn't it? The the the. It means we're doing well because they're putting us on the telly. So yeah, it's what it is. But oh, I can already. I've already seen Steve Hensman pop up, and I already know he's ready for a night out in Luton. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Daniel, thanks very much for coming Cheers, on today, mate. Really appreciate it. Bye. Bye bye. And yeah, here he is. Then let's bring him on. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Are you all right? Yeah, not too bad. Can you hear me all right? I haven't got my headphones or anything. Hey, uh, mate, you don't need headphones with us. It's absolutely fine. Oh, good, mate. Um, Loving that jump. Night out... Thank you, mate. Night out in Luton then, Steve? Night out in Luton? It's been moved to 12.30. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Oh, I'll tell you what, are these away days are like, oh, I need a permanent cash machine for away days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How are you boys doing? You all right? Yeah, good. Yeah, good. How are you, how are you feeling about, about tonight, mate? Are you think we can nick something or are you a bit everyone's a bit nervy? I I'm very nervy. I've yeah. been I've been sort of I've had my spirits lifted a little bit, listening like reading the chat and listening to what the others have said. But I um you know me, I'm a bit more uh pragmatic about it. I think we'd do well to get out of there with a draw tonight. I really do with the injuries we've got. And I don't know if Scott's going to tinker around as he's done in the previous games. But yeah, get out of there with a draw tonight. I'll be more than happy. More than happy. Yeah, definitely, mate. Well, what do you think? I mean, we're going to be talking about the uh, predicted team a bit later on, mate. But, you know, we went three at the back against Coventry City. Do you think we should be doing the same tonight or do you think it should be back to a flat back four? Uh, no, personally, I don't like the I don't like the three at the back. I never have done. Um, I don't. Yeah, I like you. I think there's plenty pl plenty of other people that would agree with that. That we've never done well with it. Really, um, it didn't. Ugh, kind of don't understand what we were messing around with with Coventry. You know, towards the end, it, it just doesn't doesn't seem to fit us very well. But I, I so I'd like to see him stick to his guns and stick to the formation we've been playing. Um, the players seem to know it. Um, and if we can just get some of those those squad players in tonight and they put a performance in, we can, we can nick it as much as we can, you know, yeah. you know, as they can, they can turn us over. You know, it's not, it's, it's one of those go, over, go either way tonight, I think. But um, I just think they've, they're just stronger, 
slightly all over the pitch. They're not suffering with injuries like we are. And that's what that's why I'm a bit cautious about it. Do you, do you think there's a danger, Tom, of Scott Parker looking back at that Coventry game and thinking, well, for 60, 65 minutes, it worked really well with three at the back. We we scored before half time. We scored half time, half time, two nil up. I had to change the formation and the personnel based on that Jefferson Lerma sending off. Do you think he might be thinking, oh, I could I could do this again, you know, uh, versus a team that are very potent? in terms of attacking force? I think the issue is that, obviously, you put Lerm back there, who's not available. So that would mean if he played three centre-halves, you'd have to bring Ibsen Rossi in, mm. a bit if mm. Keo and Kelly are out. And he came on and had a bit of a clangor, didn't he? Him and Leif yeah. Davis, I thought, were didn't, didn't, didn't have good substitute appearances. So that might put him off a little bit. Having said that, Ibsen Rossi has got height. And they're not going to... Mitch ain't going to try and get in behind, is he? They're going to try and put balls in the box, maybe, but... I agree with I agree with Steve. I probably I'd rather us just go. Let's not overcomplicate it. Let's just go with a four. I think on I think Coventry they they came on a bit cold, didn't they, into the heat of the battle? Yeah. And I don't they got up to speed as quickly, and that, and they looked a bit ropey. Um, but I think if you play if you were to play him from the off, as we've seen from Ibsen Rossi at the beginning of the season, he could do a job there. Mm. Um, it all depends on what we've got available, doesn't it? It's all Scott's keeping everything close to his chest, and we're not yeah. too sure exactly where everyone is fitness wise. So we might see a couple of little surprises. We we you know we we thought well, people might be out, and they might be might turn up and play. But okay. you know, ooh, I'm excited anyway. Yeah, all right, I'll get moving. We're going to. Get moving, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to pop off, mate. I've got to catch a train, apparently. Yeah, yeah. 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 We will see you, see you on there, that mate. train, sir. Catch you later, buddy. All right, good to see you, chaps. Bye. You too. Catch you later on. He's off. And Kirk, Toby, is here with us. Hello, fella. You all right? Hey, you doing, guys? You all right? Yeah, good, mate. Very good. good very good. Chatting to you briefly yesterday about what we were just talking about, um, formation-wise. And if, you pay, if you're playing three at the back, it means you've got to choose between Leif Davis and Jaden Anthony. Um, uh, you, w w what would you be doing? Would your preference be to be playing a four tonight? Yeah, I don't like back three. Uh, didn't know why we went for it for Coventry. I wasn't at the game, but, um, you know, people I've spoken to said we did well for 60 minutes, but I just felt that it's always going to cause us problems. It does mean that we're going to have to pick and choose certain players, then potentially you've got players that can be effective going forward, being played in a negative position like Jaden Anthony will be asked to do more stuff going backwards. Um, I don't like it. I think we need to just play a back four. I'd hope to think we can get some of our, or at least one defender back in tonight, but that's maybe me being optimistic. But yeah, I, um, I think if we play a back three and it doesn't go to plan, we're sort of in the mud then, aren't we? And then it's mm -hmm. sort of trying to recuperate the situation and, and it could all go wrong. So let's go with back four tonight and let's see what we can do. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I'd, I, there's part of me, I, I said earlier, I'm hoping that even though whether you agree with it or not, I'm hoping that Scott went for that three because he tried to match Coventry up because they went with a three and thought if we match them up, we should have too much. That's that's my hope. Um, but yeah, I agree, especially with the Jane Nantley thing. I think you lose so much of him. I know he puts that graft in, but... You want him to do what he's good at. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I'd like to think we'll go to go to a back four tonight. My my concern is, does he trust Mep and K, uh, Cook sorry, as a two as well? But like like Kirk said, we might have a few surprises, might we? Yeah, Kale could, uh, Kelly, sorry, probably not Kale. Kelly could just be back yeah. out of nowhere. But, yeah, I'd like to see us go over four. And then if they're too good for us on the night, they're too good for us on the night. But it's not overcomplicated and start changing the system and putting square pegs and round holes. Uh, yeah, I'm with Kirk. I didn't expect Kirk to come on and start Lord in a back back three, to be honest. No, uh, it's interesting <laughs> because I'm hoping that Scott Parker's playing his mind games and tactics already, keeping it close to his chest and um, Christmas trees up. Yeah, we got that up. Uh, so um, I'm hoping we've got Kelly back tonight. I think that Cahill's been fantastic this season, but I don't think it's a coincidence that he struggled since the legs that he had alongside him have not been there. And and I definitely think we saw that with with Millwall, with Mepham and, and Cahill, and, and then it's Mepham and Cook. No, neither of them, or three of them, neither of them have got pace, have they really? Mm. So I think we need legs in there today. And I think, I'd hope to think they've been trying to get Kelly up to fitness for this game. And I think yeah. if we've got Kelly in there and Cook, Kelly and Mepham, I prefer Kelly and Cook. Um, but I think we definitely need Kelly if we can get him on the pitch. 
Yeah, I agree with that. Because I, I think what kind of what Kirk's saying there, I think Kale's our best defender, mm. but which one would I least want to be without is Lloyd Kelly. Mm. Because like you say, he offers a little bit different to all the other centre halves in terms of that legs. So I've I've mentioned enough times that I think it's no coincidence how good Zamura has been because I think you know Kelly with his cover and with his pace, it allows Jay Z to bomb on and things like that. And I probably wouldn't mind Anthony as say a wing back as much if mm. Kelly was left centre back. All them yeah. I think Kelly one of them players you don't realise how good he is till he's till he's out. And like Kirk said, Kale didn't look the same player for them few games right. without him. So yeah, be that would be a, the dream to I think if Kelly can just somehow be fit yeah. and then we only lose Lerma for a game and then suddenly we're looking strong again. So hopefully Kelly's fit, mate. It's, it's not only his, his uh, defensive capabilities as well, it's his ability to get forward, but also his his long balls yeah. where Dom Solanke's always looking for that run. And in many a match, I've seen Dom Solanke peel off the back yeah. of the defender and Lloyd Kelly's found him with a pass that then yeah. stretches the play and completely opens it up. And, you know, Dom's more than competent at holding it up. And, you know what? That's something that Steve Cook used to do. Um, didn't really do at the weekend. Chris Mappen's not so adept at it. So he always gives us that, you know, the other option. So maybe that is the rabbit out of the hat. I mean, if you did have one rabbit out of the hat to pull, mate, just one, would it be Kelly? Would it be Pearson? Would it be Zamur? I mean, Z you know, Zamur is unlikely, but out of those two, what you know, what do you rather see? Well, I'd prefer if you gave me two, but true to form, Sam, you're giving me one. Um, yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's Kelly. I mean, it's Kelly. Yeah. I, I want some legs in there tonight. I want some pace in our back four, hopefully. And, um, you know, he's been a leader as well, but he definitely is the one centre back. If I had to pick him between him and Cahill, it, it's Kelly. And, yeah, I want to hold him in fielder as well, but um, you're probably not going to give me that. So, uh, Kelly, the other concern I have is if it is one rabbit out of a hat, then it's potentially Lewis Cook, Kilkenny and Billing. And then my other concern is that we've got two midfielders in there that pretty much have identical games and, and how that unsettles the balance. Because I think Kilkenny and Lewis Cook are great in, mm. in what they do, getting on the ball, turning over diagonals, getting us in attack. But they're both the same, like Tom said. And um, I don't know what that does to the balance in that midfield. So um, it'd be interesting... Um, like everyone else, you know, we just got to front it up tonight, compete. Yeah. Scott Parker's not going to be able to play his best hand, but we just maybe heart tonight gets yeah. us something. Yeah, it's 11 v 11. So come on, come on. We can do it. We can. What's your prediction then, Kurt? How does Marky Masters do it anyway? I'm trying to work it he, out. He just, he just shakes his camera. He just shakes his camera. So go on then. Go on, give it a go. Go on, do a Marky like Masters. This, so yeah, can... that's it. Don Solanke scores in the first half. Uh, Scott Parker tries to hold on. He throws on Ibsen Rossi. Yeah, it's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Kirk, cheers, mate. See you later. Pleasure, mate. Out the cherries. I uh, love it. Make sure you join him later on on his channel to, uh, for the watch along. Um, right. We're here to talk about Fulham. In a short while, I'm going to be posting a link in the live chat to Fulhamish, which is an excellent pod and YouTube channel. Do very similar things to us in terms of, you know, getting the community together and talking all things Fulham. Make sure you do one thing today, and that's click the link in a new tab and subscribe. But earlier we spoke to Sammy James from the Fulhamish pod. And uh, yeah, he's uh, very much looking forward to tonight's game. So, Sammy, it's uh, superb to have you on. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, thank you. Really looking forward to the game tonight. Yeah, huge game. So, look, talk about your season so far, because it's fair to say you've been doing all right, yeah? <laughs> yeah, we have been doing all right. Um, we've managed to catch up with the blistering start that you guys made. Um, we've all kind of wobbled in the past couple of weeks, but I think it is just set ourselves up for this kind of epic match that we see tonight, first versus second. Um, it feels like the first real big game with fans for, for a long time. So I think everyone's dead up for it. And uh, with all the narratives and Scott Parker returning, yeah, it doesn't get too much bigger than this, really. Do you feel, I don't know about you, but ball with fans, a number of them feel this. Do you feel as though the quality in general in the championship is not there this season? No. It's not. It's just, it, it's, it's, I think it's a side effect of everything that's happened with the pandemic is that this league was already kind of running on the edge of a bit of a shoestring and 
it's, it's just become a real league of haves and have nots. Look, I'm not going to complain because it's put us in the position that we're in and it's been a really fun year to watch Fulham kind of take apart different teams. But when you beat the team that's in, well, where are Blackburn? Fourth or fifth? We beat them 7-0. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's when you start thinking... <laughs> Uh, something's not quite right here. You tend to maybe beat the team at the bottom of the league by that kind of scoreline, but to beat the team in the playoffs, and I think we beat Stoke 3-0, we've beaten QPR 4-1, all of them are either in or around the playoffs. The only team that we've fallen foul against is Coventry, which obviously you guys have found the hard way yeah. out about with them as well. Yeah, so from reading what a lot of Fulham fans are saying on social media, especially over Twitter, a lot of them loving Marco Silva this season. More so than when Parker got you up. Why is that? What's the difference between the two? Well, there's definitely a, a contrast of styles. Um, Parker, certainly in his time at Fulham, I can't fully speak to what he's doing with you guys, was a man that wanted to win a little bit by contrition. It was a lot, it was a lot of keeping the ball for the sake of keeping the ball. Quite often we would get ourselves into a one goal lead and we would not hang on but Parker would then put tactics in place kind of Italia old Italian football style to see out the one nil win um, often he'd load up the defense it was often very very effective and in the Premier League he came up with a style of football as well that whilst it did okay it was quite solid defensively it wasn't very exciting to watch um and yeah, Marcus Silva is definitely not in that school of thought. His his school of thought is, well, no, why, why win a game by one nil when we could win it by three or four? He wants to keep on attacking till the very end. You know, not at the detriment of the team. There's occasions where he's played it safe, but most of the time he's quite keen on, you know, getting big score lines um, as opposed to the style that, that Parker implemented. I think a lot of Bournemouth fans are starting to realise what you're talking about. Look, we were treated to some pretty good football at Eddie Howe, apart from the last season in the Premier League, and we'd be very gung-ho about it. we just try to outscore teams. And there were teams that we battered 5-0, 6-0, 4-0. However, Scott Parker, it seems he's got a sort of handbrake-on mentality. And there have been times where we've been 2 nil up and we've been absolutely coasting. For instance, Blackpool at home, uh, we could have saw the game out 3-0, 4-0, but it felt as though we changed our tactics at that point in time, and then we invited it on. And similar to Coventry, yes, we had a sending off, but ultimately we invited what happened, and we were duly punished. And, you know, they were good for the point, really. I haven't got any complaints about it. So it's one of the things that um, we're very wary of. Um, There's a certain player... That of course we're wary off for Fulham, but without mentioning the M word, can you can you maybe tell us a few other players that we should be keeping our eyes on for tonight's game? Yeah, sure. Um, I would say that John Seri is the man that makes everything tick in the middle. Um, what a strange Fulham career he's had. He arrived when we got promoted the first time, uh, the African Javi, he was called, and he was very, very good for us for about five games and then kind of dropped away, has then done a series of loans in France and Turkey for the past two or three years. Parker didn't seem that keen on him. And then he's come back to Fulham this year and he is so good. His passing range is ridiculous. Ridiculous. If you give him time in the middle, then he will punish you. He doesn't really like a lot of pressure, but that will be why he's massively pleased that Jefferson Lerma is not around tonight because uh, he might have made Seri's life a bit miserable. But without Lerma, I think that Seri will have that space um, to probe, um, to kind of play the game at his tempo. So, yeah, he's a massively key player. And also Fabio Carvalho. Um, he's our young starlet. Who knows if he's going to be here next season because he's touted by some of the very, very best. But he should be playing tonight and he's got goals in him. He's creative. He's tenacious um, and he's a fantastic little number 10. But even though you think he's a little number 10, mm. you think he hasn't got any strength or um, kind of ability to hold off big championship uh, midfielders. He seems to have a lot of that from his low centre of gravity to be able to, to hold them off. So, yeah, he's a wonderful player as well. Looking forward to seeing that. OK, so... So percentage wise, if you're going to put it as a 50-50 split or 60-40, is this match big for you? Because one, of course, it's AFC Bournemouth. Or is it two, because it's Scott Parker? It's obviously big because of where you guys are at the table. Like, I'm, obviously, I don't think there's anything because it's Bournemouth per se and there's any kind of rivalry. We haven't played each other an awful no. lot over the years. We've kind of avoided each other. Um, the Parker factor is massive. The Parker yeah, factor yeah. is just huge. The way he left us... 
um, was not great. I don't think many Fulham fans were very happy about the way he kind of felt, they felt like he played Fulham off to try and get his move. I think a lot yeah. of Fulham fans were either like, go or stay, stop yeah. messing around and, and and wrecking our preparations for the next season. And the way he treated Mitrovic in the, in the Premier League yeah. and the way that he didn't use him. And now Mitrovic is on a massive point to prove that he is the striker that could have kept Fulham up and in the Premier League last season. So the Parker fact is massive. The fact that it's first v second just makes it even more spicy. I think it's the combination of the two that uh, has made Fulham fans really, really want to win this one. Yeah, so do, if you get three points later on, do, do you feel as though effectively you've got one hand on the trophy or is that a bit too premature? Bit premature. I think it's I think it's important though. You look at your fixtures coming up. I think you've got Blackburn and Middlesbrough yeah. after this, which is yeah. two difficult games. Yeah. Uh, our, our, actually, Christmas isn't the easiest either. Um, but I think a four point gap going into difficult games for you and slightly simpler games for us would be a huge psychological barrier. But there's still a lot of football to be played. I'd be very confident of our... Do you know what? I think maybe I would be more confident if we won tonight of chances of top two. First, like... Yeah. And does yeah, it matter, okay, yeah. really? Ultimately, both of us want to get promoted. Champions would be amazing, but we both want top two. I think if, I think whoever wins may have one hand on the top two, but not on getting above Bournemouth because four points is nothing, really. Yeah, I think most Bournemouth fans are the same train of thought. We're We're looking to keep clear of third. And you know, whatever happens between us two, we're, we're not so concerned. Um, so, Sammy, prediction wise for tonight, then I, go on, then what are you going for? I would be lying if I said I wasn't confident, to be honest. Yeah. I, I am, I'm confident that Fulham are the best team on paper in this division. And looking at your injuries, and I'd be interested mm. to know if there is any intel as to whether Cahill, Kelly um, are back. Obviously, we know that Lerma's out and that feels massive. As soon as we all saw that come through last weekend, we were very, very pleased. Not yeah. just the result that happened in the end. If it had been 2-0 to Bournemouth, but you'd have had Lerma suspended, we'd have still been quite pleased with that yeah. outcome. Given all that, I think that it plays into Fulham's hands quite nicely. So I'm going to go for 3-1. 3-1. Interesting stuff. And uh, for people who don't know, I'm sure they do because you are the number one Fulham pod and YouTube channel. Can you tell people a little bit about it? Yeah, yeah. We've been going for uh, four or five years now. Um, we have a podcast, YouTube channel, a blog, everything Fulham. Uh, from we, we try and get to as many games as we can and just uh, give our honest experiences of the matches. Much like you do and the terrific work that you guys do on, on this channel, we just try and be a hub and, and a safe space for, for Fulham fans to hang out, meet each other and communicate. So, um, yeah, and uh, and everyone is particularly buzzing uh, for for tonight. I can, uh, I can definitely tell you that. Superb. Well, Sammy, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it, mate. No worries. <laughs> yes, lads. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to see the Bournemouth win away. Hey. You have to go one step further, though. You've got little flashing lights on yours. I have to go one step further. I can't even work out which way around this needs to go oh, to, there, to do the stars. Anyway, one for each goal we scored at uh, Craven Cottage oh, that last time. Are there five there? There should be. Anyway, these are our Christmas hats. Are you donning yours? Are you donning your Christmas jumper? Let us know. Right. Great to chat to Sammy from the Fulhamish pod. We put the link on the chat on YouTube. Make sure you go and subscribe to it. Right. Now, pubs and predictions. If you've got a prediction for tonight, you must have right. We need to know what it is. So get it in on chat in the next 60 seconds, whether you're watching on a tablet, a phone, on your laptop, whatever. Put your prediction in on chat and we'll go through what you think it's going to be like tonight. But firstly, pubs wise, I hear there's a pub that um, is going to be very popular tonight. Shall we say the name? Yeah, do we say the names? We tempt everyone to get there. Yeah, stuff at eight bells. Yeah, get to eight bells. Um, no, eight bells. I've been there before. Uh, last couple of times I've been to Fulham, and it was always pretty lively. Always, always good in there. Um, I think mainly because it's just proper away fans pub, yeah, so you yeah. just get everyone in there and stuff. And I remember going there on that Friday night as well, and it was a really good atmosphere. So 
hopefully same again i think plenty of travel so um yeah that's that's good well there, there must be some more i'm not 100 percent sure on on all the other pubs and stuff like that have you got any more or? yeah no i mean if you if you go to putney bridge um there are a few places uh you've got to be obviously careful that some of them are home fans only but you know, a lot of people are drinking in and around Waterloo. Obviously, the hole in the wall, as soon as you get off from the station, uh, just on the other side of the bridge, is a place to have a, a loosener, shall we say. And then, yeah, tube it or train it to Putney. And just be um, just be wary. There are some issues with the with the trains this weekend, I think, later on, so when you're getting back. So just maybe check the TFL website and also um, South Western Railway to make sure you get there. There's the option of getting the Uber boat, the Thames Clipper from Embankment or Blackfriars all the way to Putney. Have a few beers on there as well. Nice. And remember, face mask. Oh, yeah. Wear your face mask. Otherwise, you can get a substantial fine. Yeah, we all love them, don't we? No, we don't. Right. This is what everyone is saying then. Christian's going for a one all. We've got um, a 2 0 away win, said Morgan. Did he say that earlier? Can't remember. Yeah, he did. He did, did he? Oh, fair yeah. play. Two all. We got Desmond from Aaron K. Um, we got a two-one from Funny Moments to Bournemouth. One all, uh, big win. Chris Hubble, you feeling okay? I think I need to take your temperature. See how the four-two. Four, you see how the Christmas hats have just live and everyone. Like, everyone's getting a bit more positive. You know, all the draws are turning to wins. You know, all the defeats are turning to draws. So it's love, amazing what a Christmas hat can do. Loving the positivity. It's so good. All right, four oh, to Fulham. Oh. Cheers, Martin. Um, one all says Mark Cole. We've got Robin Wright with a one all. Layla is going 2 1. Christy and Billy. At some point, Christy will score. He's got to score, yeah. score. He's got to score. Wilson for them. Don't. We know he did that last time when Cardiff played us, right? Um, Bournemouth to win, obviously, says Simon. 2 1. 2 all, says John. Duncan Spokes 2 0. Look forward to seeing you later, Duncan. Uh, one all as well. Mm. As you do. <laughs> 4 1 Fulham says Rob. Uh, he's being a realist. Oh, Heather. What are you on about? Oh, Five, three. Look, you know, look, we've got we've got a few scores here where um people are doing head and heart. And look, head says two one, heart two uh one all. And Bob's done exactly the same thing there, going for a head and a heart. One nil Solanke to bag the winner. Steve Hensman's going for a three one loss. One all oh, Last minute, Jay Nancy goal, Harry, still going for 2-1. So those are your predictions. We also, of course, need to go through the starting eleven, and we need your help on chat to do that. So let's do it now. Here we are then. Here we are. And on chat, we uh, need you to tell us which players. Uh, there are certain players. In fact, should we just tell them to go for the whole of the back four or not? I mean, look, let's let's assume we are going for a back four. Is that what we're going to assume? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's obviously that, that thing in the back of your head thinks, will he go for a three slash five? But I like to think we tried it. Let's move on now. Let's go back to the four. Yeah, yeah. We haven't really got the options. I mean, we're, we've got to go with this assuming Kenny's out, Pearson's yeah. out. I think obviously there'll be certain people saying, you know, maybe we'll have a surprise, but let's go off what we think is available. Yeah. Because there might be a few surprises, which would be great. But going off what we think is available, I think the back four. Um, I might start with Travers and Goal as well, mate. Travers and Goal. Mm. Okay, let's add Mark Travers in. And look, sometimes I think uh, when you've got your own opinions, you can get tied up too tight in wondering whether it's going to be a back five, whether it's going to be a back four. But Jacob Tanswell has put probably going to be a 4-3-3. There are other media outlets saying the same. Some people like Townswell are also alluding to the fact that we may see Kelly coming back in and maybe Mepham on the left side, which mm. is, uh, well, you know, we've seen that already and it didn't really work. You know, I'd probably prefer Leif Davis there, to be fair, but I don't know. I could say If Kelly were to be back, obviously we're going to assume he's not. If he were then I could see that. I could, I could see him, whether you agree or not, I could see him putting Mepham at left back and going, Meps, you ain't going past the halfway line. You stop Harry Wilson. You stop the supply mm. um, at left back and have Cook and, and Kay as a, as a Cook and Kelly as a pairing. Um, but yeah, I hope Kelly's back. But going with the fact that he's not, then it's going to have to be a pairing of <coughs> Mepham and Steve Cook. Yeah. I mean, he, apparently Kelly's been seen uh and it looks as like he, he he's kind of pre he's preparing like he would play but 
Yeah. So Steve Cook on the left. This is, you know, this is assuming. Assuming Kelly's out. Yeah. Assuming Kelly's out. Obviously, so. if he's in, he would be in. Um, yeah. And then it's going to have to be Stacey at right back. Smith's another one we haven't spoke about enough, but he is back in training. And I don't expect Stacey to come out, but he's an option that we're struggling on that left side. Mm. Potentially, if he's closer to fitness than the others, he could play left back. Yeah. Um, but again, we're going off what we're hearing that, you know, no one's really back. So for me, put Davis back in at left back. We we'll have to put Davis back in at left back, I think. And Heather's in agreement, apart from Jack Stacey, who she's put Smith. I mean, yeah, it, it would be fantastic. And Stacey's been off the boil. Yeah, sure. But, you know, quite often he comes good in big matches, Jack Stacey, you've got to say. So, yeah, we, we will see what happens there. Leaf Davis, yeah. there we go. There we go. So, 4 3 3, or you could put it as a 4 2 1 2 1 or whatever. Yeah. But what, you know, if we're going to go the double pivot route, which you probably will need, yeah. um, then there are some big decisions to be made. Now, are we doing it on the assumption that Ben Pearson's out? I think we've got to, really. I mean, if he were to be in, then if he were to be fit, then he's, he's straight back in, probably for Gav. But um, assuming he's out, we know Lerma's definitely out. It's going to have to be, you know, like Kurt was saying earlier, they're very similar, but it's going to have to be Kilkenny and Lewis Cook again. Um, as the six and the eight in there, kind of double pivot, if you like. And um, I don't expect... But, I mean, there is always that option of you can move Billing back and move Christy inside, all this kind of stuff. But we all know that Billing's far better in an advanced role. So I expect it to be Kilkenny and Lewis Cook with, with Billing in that in that seven there, as you got it, and just a little bit more advanced. And yeah, it would be ideal if we could have Ben Pearson back, but I don't think he will be, sadly. Uh, Chris Hubble is saying that he thinks that uh, Pearson could be involved okay. with Lewis Cook. I mean, yeah, would be would be really nice. And Morgan's gone for the same as what we have as well. Uh, Daniel from Florida saying Kilkenny and Cook. Duncan's agreeing with what we say. Cook, Kilkenny and Billing. Um, Aaron saying, OK, I love this. Detective K has done more work. Marcondes was wearing skins in all the other training pictures. The player in question was not it's pearson oh that's good i love that from aaron that's great work okay so okay if that happens yeah i'm taking kilkenny out i think kilkenny out yeah i think i think i'm taking kilkenny out what does what do people think of the chat i think lewis cook was brilliant oh we, we obviously got to keep an eye on lewis cook with his fitness he did have a bad injury but mm. as if we're assuming he's back and he's sharp then you know kilkenny's been brilliant for us but you don't play kilkenny and lewis cook yeah. and i think the way lewis played against coventry I think I would rather have him in there. So I yeah. think if we, you know, just to count the point, if it is Pearson, he would come in for Kilkenny for me. Yeah. Okay. No worries. And, uh, you know, this formation, I mean, like the way this is shaping up, I think I can guess yeah. player nine and player 10, right? Yeah. I think if it's this system, I think it speaks for itself. It's Jane Nantley on that left side, Ryan Christie on the right side, for sure. Um, yeah. Lowe's always an option, but I think that, you know, that front three obviously gone through the middle. Um, if we play that system, it's got to be that three, really. It'll only be, yeah, that'll only really change if we change the system and Anthony reverts to a wing back, wouldn't it? Really, but them three will play depending what them them from four really will all play definitely. Yeah. So there we go. That is our team for tonight. Assuming mm. that going four at the back and like everyone's saying Christie and Anthony, yeah, Solanke. Uh, we've got James who's saying Kilkenny is good, but he's still young for a big game today. Would rather someone with more experience of course Duncan is saying Dom up top as well and Heather agrees yep. too so there is our team for tonight we will scroll through it again so you can have a look that's what we're going for if you think different make sure you put your team in the comments look I'm not going to promise a mug for this one uh just because we haven't got any left but I, I am sending one out to Chris is, is Chris Cook in Sydney Oh, the postage on that. Ugh. Oh, my God. And David Cordell in uh, Washington still awaiting his mug. And other people in the States have got theirs. So maybe wait for a bit and just see, because hopefully it, it will turn up. But there we go, mate. Have, have we have we gone premature with the Christmas hats? Uh, maybe a little bit. We'll find out at the end of the, end of the game, I think. You know, we're in trouble if, if we win tonight and we go on an unbeaten run. I'm going to be wearing these in January. Um <laughs> But no, listen, we've we spoke about it enough. It's gonna be a, a proper sweat tonight. It's gonna to be a really, really difficult game. Um, but let's let's enjoy it. Let's 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 go into it the fact that we're not expecting anything. All the pressure's on Fulham. We might get a few nice surprises with players back. I mean, we haven't even mentioned someone like a Stanislas or you know, we, we might get a few a few more a few more back. But um yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really difficult game, but Oh, I, don't, I love an away day. Friday night. It's like a drug, isn't it? An away day on a Friday night in London. I can't wait, mate. So bring it on and yeah, quite quietly confident now. I don't know why I've got quietly confident now. I was saying we're never going to win this. Now I'm thinking we can nick this, you know. Hang on. 
I've just, something's just occurred to me, mate, Go on. Th throughout this show for the last, what is it, hour and a bit. Mm. I'm sure that you've been shoehorning in. Don't know what you're talking about. Uh, come on. Don't know Do what you're talking about. I may have shoehorned in a certain band's few, few of their song titles during the show, maybe for eagle eyed eagle listeners might have uh, picked up on. We'll see. We'll find out. I wonder if anyone has. Watch back throughout the show. And tell us on Twitter if you know the band whose song titles you've been you've been actually thinking about it. You've been littering them throughout the show. I, I just thought at the end there, you, sh you know, like you got one in, yeah. and now I'm just going back thinking, hang on, you've yeah. been doing this one. Very, oh, I very like clever, it. I very like clever, it. Clever, yeah. Name the band. What band? Are we? <laughs> You're gonna have to watch back now. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. We're getting the 259 train from Bournemouth. We'll be outside Craven Cottage. With some fan chats, come rain, shine, win or loss. We'll be looking forward to getting your view. Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure today to have you on. Really appreciate it. Really enjoyed it, mate. Yeah, it's uh, been a really, really nice show. So really enjoyed it. Can you do some brekkie now? Or... Yeah, let's do some bacon sandwiches oh, yeah. on the way. Other cherries and see you at Craven Cottage. Come on.